Welcome everyone into what will be a fascinating video, Yu-Gi-Oh! Anime Ace Monsters tier list. There's a heap of monsters on this list, I'll just scroll down and show you. So yeah, a big video in store, coming up. Coming up first, we have to start off with Yugi and his Dark Magician. Dark Magician has 2500 attack and 2100 defense. This monster for me is pretty much an S tier. Very iconic monster, has a lot of memorable moments throughout the series, and is often um, used in many different situations and cool ways with um, Yugi's dolls. Okay, coming up next is Joey Wheeler and his ace monster in Red Eyes Black Dragon. Red Eyes Black Dragon has 2400 attack and 2000 defense. Had some very um, iconic moments in the series. Really much loved um, Red Eyes in the series. Pretty much Red Eyes for me, you'll go in the A tier rank. Rightio, next up is Zodiac the Forbidden One, of course, run by Yugi in the first episode of Season 1, Yu-Gi-Oh! This monster for me, even though it doesn't feature in too many episodes in the series, is definitely an S-tier monster. Such an iconic moment when Yugi gets the final piece of it, Zodia, and then obliterates Kaiba's three um, blue eyes on the field. That, for me, is just god-tier status. If there was a god-tier status, he'd probably get it for me. But an S-tier rank, um, it Zodia gets. Next up on our list, guys, is Seto Kaiba's Blue Eyes White Dragon. 3,000 attack, 2,500 defense. Of course, Kaiba has three copies of this card, and he ripped up the fourth copy of Grandpa, so no one could play this card against him. This card, for me, definitely goes on the S tier. It had such um, many memorable moments throughout the series, and it's just a really cool, collectible monster to get in real life and everything. For me, definite S tier. Next up, guys, is the Egyptian God cards. Of course, Obelisk the Tormentor uh, was Seto Kaiba's uh, God card. Yugi had the uh, Slyth of the Sky Dragon, and Yami Marek had the Winged Dragon of Ra. All of these monsters, for me, are all S-tier monsters. They were built up so nicely throughout Battle City. It was very interesting in how they were played. All their amazing effects, like Obelisk being able to blow up the board. Slyther having sort of massive attack if you had a heap of cards in hand. And Winged Dragon of Ra had so many abilities that it got split off into so many different variations in the real life TCG and OCG. But yeah, those monsters are definitely S tier monsters for me. Rightio, coming up next guys is the Paradox Brothers Gate Guardian. So Gate Guardian is pretty much a fusion of Kazajin, Soijin, and Sangha of the Thunder. Gate Guardian for me is a cool ace monster and all, but it was only featured really in one um, episode, and Joey and Yugi really overcome the card quite easily. So for me, it's going to fit in the C tier category. And what hurts Gate Guardian as well, you need to get all three of the, uh, like, Soijin, Kajijin, Sangha of the Thunder together to even make this card and it's just impossible to play in real life and whatnot so for me this card is definitely a C tier. Next up on the list is one of Yami Bakura's ace monsters guys and this one is Dark Neck Refair. Dark Neck Refair has an attack of 2200 and defense of 2800 with a pretty cool effect as well. You've got to banish three fiend monsters from your graveyard to play this card to get it on the field. And if it's destroyed the next turn, you can take control of one of your other opponent's monsters and equip uh, Dark Necrofear in the Spell and Trap Zone. For me, uh, it will fit in a solid B tier. It's a memorable monster, but it's not as iconic as some of the other ones that we've had. Next up, guys, is Seto Kaiba's Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon... Uh, is a very powerful card if you get it onto the field. 4,500 attack and 3,800 defense. Not as memorable as the Blue Eyes and some of the Iconic mon Monsters in the S tier and the A tier. For me, this card will go definitely into the B tier. Next up on this list, guys, is Maximilian Pegasus and his Thousand Eyes Restrict. Thousand Eyes Restrict is actually a really cool card. You can take control of a monster on your opponent's side of the field, equip it to Thousand Eyes Restrict, 
And Thousand Eyes Restrict uh, is very hard to destroy because you can't destroy it in a battle. You can't even target it um, with an attack. But if we were to rank it in terms of the anime um, ace monster, for me, I think Relinquished is slightly more iconic than Thousand Eyes Restrict. And I think Thousand Eyes Restrict is a solid B tier on this list. Next up, guys, is Weevil Underwood's Insect Queen. Insect Queen has 2200 attack and 2400 defense. Insect Queen, for me, is the first D tier card in this list it's very hard to use like you've got to tribute your other monsters to sort of get this card to attack it produces tokens and that every turn but the tokens can easily be targeted with attacks and when you think about it joey made easy work of this card so i'm, I'm giving that card a d tier next up on our list guys is bandit keith and his slot machine as his ace monster i like slot machine i think slot machine is cool design and everything and you power it up with seven completed and other little power ups that uh, keith had was used in the series of course and it, it's a solid uh c tier for me next up is castle of dark illusions now castle of dark illusions is panic's uh boss monster from Dullus kingdom I don't really rate Castle of Dark Illusions that highly. It didn't really do anything. It just sort of defended Panic and that was about it. As Panic tried to install fear into Yugi and Yugi wasn't buying it. And I was pretty much humiliated when um, Swords of Revealing Light was found to only be holding it up. And then it just crumbled to the ground, crushing all Panic's monsters. Definitely a D tier for me. Next up on our list is Five-Headed Dragon, guys. Five-Headed Dragon was, of course, uh, the Big Five's ace monster. Um, the Big Five were um, pretty much executives in that in Kyber Corp. And they were villains in the series. Five-Headed Dragon, for me, even though it has a high attack and high defense, like, Yugi and Kyber make easy work of the card. And it didn't really stand out for me. So, for me, it's another D-tier monster. Next up on our list, guys, is uh, Harpy Lady Sisters, and this is my Valentine's Ace Monster in the series. This card's actually used really well in many different situations. Uh, I reckon the Harpy Lady's really featured really well in Waking the Dragon's Arc, where Mai was sort of um, an anti-type villain, where she got taken advantage of by darts. But yeah, Harpy Lady and Harpy Lady Sisters... This ace monster for me is definitely a solid B tier. Next up, this is Jinzo. 2400 attack, 1500 defense. Asper Rober and Joey Wheeler's ace card. Jinzo for me is such a beastly monster in Battle City. It's actually Joey's best card when he does win it off Asper Rober. Used to um, negate traps in the back row. Jinzo for me has iconic status. He is just not quite S tier, but he is a deservant A tier monster. Coming up uh, is Mystical Beast of Circuit and Odeon's Ace Monster, guys. Pretty much Mystical Beast of Circuit is a pretty efficient monster. If it destroys uh, opponent's monsters, it gains 500 attack. Yeah, Odeon had a pretty solid uh, monster. For me, it will fit in the b tier for me i quite like the card it's got a pretty good effect and it can build up um, a lot of attack pretty quickly next up on the list is mako tsunami's uh the legendary fisherman the legendary fisherman is not a very strong ace monster uh probably for me a legendary fisherman will probably fit in the c tier rank I do like the uh, story behind the Legendary Fisherman and whatnot, but based on what it can do, it needs to have Umi on the field so uh, it can't be targeted for an attack um, effectively. Next up is the Pump King, uh, the King of uh, Ghost. This is Bones' uh, ace monster, and of course it features in a duel between Bones and Joey. And Pump King, the King of Ghosts, boosts all the zombies on the field every turn by, I think it was 100 points. For me, yeah, not too rememberable as an ace monster, and it's going to go in the D 
tier rank for me. Next up, guys, is Shinado, the King of Higher Plane. Uh, this is Noah Kaiba's boss or ace monster from the Virtual World Art, which was uh, sandwiched um, in between the Battle City tournament. A pretty um, epic uh, boss monster, but the Virtual World Art for me was too great in terms of um, where it was placed. Good ideas and whatnot, but um, poorly executed. But yeah, Shinado for me is a, a C tier um, in this uh, list. Okay, so we've got Zodia Necros, and this is Gozaboro Kyber. And his ace monster, he tried to get this monster out and use it against Kyber in their duel in Virtual World. Zodia Necros is not as memorable as it's Zodia. It doesn't belong in the first three tiers. For me, it will scrape in the C tier rank. Okay, so Nightmare Penguin and Crump uh, is our next monster to put on the tier list. This is definitely a D tier for me. Nightmare Penguin doesn't strike any fear into anyone, and Crump's beaten by Taya, who doesn't really do. So that puts it into perspective how strong his ace monster and his penguin deck really was. Next up on the list is Deerbound Colonel. Now, Deerbound Colonel is Yami Bakura's ace monster and used in the um, Egyptian arc in the past. Deerbound Colonel uh, and Bakura go around causing havoc um, everywhere. It's actually a, um, another really solid um, ace monster for uh, Bakura. So for me, I think that fits nicely in the B tier for me. Next up... Super Robo Yaru, and that is Tristan Taylor's ace monster. Everyone knows where this will be going on the list. D tier monster. I don't think it strikes the fear into anyone. Like, I like the design and everything, but yeah, it, it's not very high on my list. Sorry, Tristan. Next up is Dark Magician Girl, and another ace monster from Yugi. Dark Magician Girl is most people's favorite um waifu card and dark magician girl features for the first time against arcana in battle city for me this is a definite s tier card okay we've got arcana's dark magician i love the artwork of this card or not but we're here to rank them based on the boss monster dark magician of course yugi's one's an s tier Arcana's one, for me, is more or less sort of uh, in the B tier rank. He uses it quite well, but Yugi ultimately outskills him with um, his Dark Magician, and ultimately Dark Magician Girl. So, yeah, Arcana's one will fit in the B tier rank. Next up is Serpent Knight Dragon, and this is Rex Raptor and one of his ace monsters. Yeah, pretty cool um, card. Uh, it was used, I believe, in Duelist Kingdom against Joey. It's very hard for me. It's either a C or D tier card. I think it deserves a C tier status. It did have a wee bit of an impact in the duel between Rex and Joey before it got beaten. Next up is Gangsley uh, from the Big Five and his Deep Sea Warrior. This was his deck master and it had some pretty nifty effects and whatnot. But in terms of an ace monster, this, this is definitely a D tier for me. Next up on our list, I believe this is Diamond Head Dragon, uh, Rebecca Hawkins and her ace card. It features, I think, in one episode in a uh, duel that uh, I think her and Duke Devlin lost. Yeah, not too rememberable for me, and uh, that's going to go into the D tier for me as well. It, cool design and everything, cool name for the card, but it didn't really stand out in the anime for me. Next up on the list is Judge Man, and this is Johnson's ace card. Johnson is part of the Big Five uh, from the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. Yeah, Judge Man is pretty much the deck master, and Johnson's taken the form of Judge Man in the particular episodes that um, Johnson and Joey um, battled it out in. Yeah, Judge Man uh, still was a D tier for me. It's, it's not really an ace monster that you'd um, use in real life for anything. Raphael and his Guardian Niatos. 
the story in Raphaelna's cards was pretty cool in Waking the Dragons. It was pretty much what lifted the arc for me in terms of quality and whatnot. And he inflicted the Pharaoh a lot. So Gardeniatos was actually a pretty good ace monster in my book and the Yu-Gi-Oh! series. For me, it's going to get A tier status. I I like Gardeniatos. Very easy to summon. And Raphael's ace monster definitely deserves um, a high ranking. Next up on the list is Mass Beast Desgradius. It's got a pretty epic attack of 3300 and 2600 defense. Pretty cool looking um, ace monster in my book. And I think it deserves a place in the B tier for me. Of course, Lumis and Umbra in um, Battle City is one of their ace monsters. Next up we have the Silent Magician, level 8. Duke Devlin and his Strike Ninja is next to be graded on this tier list. Strike Ninja for me is not really his ace monster. I consider Duke Devlin's ace monster Orgoth the Relentless. So that loses a few um, tier um, status points for me. I'm going to put the Strike Ninja in the C tier. Cool monster. Very good effect and whatnot uh, in terms of, um, I think, banishing um, a couple of cards from the graveyard and negating a few effects here and there. Of course, it was featured in the Dungeon Dice Monsters uh, battles between um, himself and Joey and himself and Yugi. We have got Yugi Moto's Silent Magician Level 8. And this card was used in the uh, last duel of the Yu-Gi-Oh! series between Little Yugi and uh, the Pharaoh. Silent Magician Level 8 is actually a really good um, ace monster. 3,500 attack and 1,000 uh, defense. And I believe it's unaffected by spell effects in that too. So with that in mind, I will put that in the B tier. Not as rememberable as some of the other monsters on this list, but still a pretty good boss monster. Another Loomis and Umbra card, guys. Another ace monster. And this is the Masked Beast. This is the Ritual card. And another strong monster and another cool design. Like, in terms of um, how effective it was in the duel between uh, Lumis and Umbra and Kyber and Yugi, didn't really feature too much. And with that in mind and how effective it could have been, it, it's probably a C tier for me. Mass Beast Yes Gradius is the better of the two cards, and that's why it got its B tier status over the Mass Beast. This is the Divine Serpent. I believe this is Darts' ace monster from uh, the Waking the Dragons um, arc in the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. There was a great anticipation of what uh, this monster was going to be uh, when Darts eventually got round to dueling Kyber and uh, Yu-Gi. Yeah, the Divine Serpent was a bit of a let down for me. I thought it could have been more epic. Like the way Darts was building it up in his voice and whatnot and bringing um, all his cards out including this ace monster here it could have been a bit more epic in terms of an ace monster for me so yeah it's it's in the c tier for me for that um, particular monster perfect machine king and nisbet um, one of the big five uh from the kyber corp this guy got a victory in the, the uh virtual world arc so prompt props to him and perfect machine king um Pretty cool design, um, got bolstered up in attack quite a bit. Uh, for me, in terms of the this list, he's probably hovering in between the B tier and the C tier for me. I'm going to plonk him in the B tier. I think he had an impact in the series and gave his um, gave the Duelist Nesbitt a win. Siegfried von Schroeder and his Valkyrie uh, Brunheide is uh, the ace monster that we're trying to grade here. Like, we saw little snippets of the Valkyries throughout the Grand uh, Championship arc, but ultimately, Seto Kaiba um, humiliated Siegfried von Schroeder on the world uh, stage at uh, Kaiba's own tournament, effectively. I love the Valkyrie archetype and whatnot, but it, the Valkyrie um, Brunheide card in the particular um, arc that it was played in, for me will fit in the C tier because it didn't really have an impact. Next up, we're changing it up a little bit too. We're going to do some Yu-Gi-Oh! GX uh, Ace Monsters for a while. We'll start off with the Sacred Beast uh, cards. Uh, that is Ravi, our Lord of Phantasms. 
Hamon, Lord of Striking Thunder, and Uriah, Lord of Searing Flames. Of course, played by Kagi Maru and Marcel Bonaparte in the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX anime. These guys here, um, they've got amazing effects. Really strong monsters and whatnot. Like, they can cause absolute carnage. But they are, um, to me, a carbon copy of Obelisk, Slyther, and uh, the Wing Dragon of Ra, the Egyptian God cards. For me, that loses real high status for me. So they're going to go into the C tier uh, for me, all three of these guys. Next up, we have Jaden Yuki's Ace Monster, Elementor Hero Neos. Elementor Hero Neos, um, for me, is definitely an S-tier Ace Monster. The reason being is he can um, fuse with many different other monsters, and all these um, fusion um, Neos cards all have pretty cool abilities. This, for example, um, Grand Neos can return stuff back to hand. You've got Glow Neos, which can destroy cards and do things depending on what it destroys that that's just a couple of examples of um, the contact fusions that this um, element here and neos can do but pretty epic uh, monster uh, for me and he deserves um, s tier status and that's our first monster outside of Yu-Gi-Oh to get s tier status for me next up is the rainbow dragon of course played by jesse anderson in the Yu-Gi-Oh gx series Rainbow Dragon is a very epic monster. It's pretty hard to summon, uh, to be honest. You've got to get seven Crystal Beast cards either in the field or graveyard to be able to get this guy out. But um, it's a powerful, really good effects. Uh, and, of course, it's epic when uh, Jaden fuses Rainbow Dragon and um, Element Hero Neos to make Rainbow Neos. For me, it's not quite S tier. It will fit in the A tier category for me. Next up on the list, guys, is h and Golem, and this is one of Crowler's cards in the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX anime. h and Golem is actually pretty epic. 3,000 attack is pretty fierce, I and mean, it does piercing damage when it destroys a defensive position monster. h and Gears is one of my favorite archetypes from the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX anime, and it has a reasonable impact on the series as well. For me, it gets a solid B tier ranking, but very, very close to getting in the A tier rank for me. Tanya and her Amazonas Paladin. Uh, probably one of her ace monsters. Not her strongest ace monster. I'd regard that to Amazonas Queen. Amazonas Paladin um, was very effective in most duels Tanya had, though. She was very hard to beat. Of course, she beat uh, Bastion in the, the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX uh, series before Jaden ultimately defeated Tanya in that very battle they had. For yeah, for me, Amazonas Paladin probably in the C tier for me. Next up, guys, is Cloudy and Eye of the Typhoon. Uh, this is played by Adrian Gecko in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, of course. Yeah, it's a pretty cool monster with a pretty cool effect of switching defensive monsters into attack position and vice versa, depending on what um, position the monster's in on the opponent's side of the field. Pretty good attack and whatnot. But for me, that doesn't strike fear into anyone, that ace monster. And it's not very rememberable for me. Like Cloudians, I would prefer to play Nimbusman over Cloud Cloudian Eye of the Typhoon because Nimbusman can really bolster up depending on how many tokens it's got. Yeah, C, C tier for me. Not not D tier or anything. Like, the Ace Monster doesn't deserve to um, be in that D tier status. Next up, we have Ojama King. Now, Ojama King's a fusion of yellow, black, and green. Ojama uh, King, yeah, a cape and um, a pair of um, speedos by the looks of it. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, pretty pretty decent monster once it gets a Jama Country and that on the board. But sorry, W Knight, if you do watch this video, man, just in all honesty, our Jama King has to go into the D tier. But we all know on the stream he's got godly type status. Next up is Ultimate Tyranno, of course run by Tyranno Hasselbury. Very, very good monster actually. Uh can attack all the opponent's monsters on the field in the one turn. It has to legitimately. I've had some issues with this card, of course, in Tag Force 2 with the old Spear Cretan loop where um, Tyranno continuously attacks a Cretan for all eternity. But in terms of grading this on the tier list, for me, Tyranno's uh, Ace Monster fits in the B tier for me. 
Next up, we've got the Cyber End Dragon, and that is Zane True Star's uh, ace monster from Yu Gi Oh! GX. Probably my favorite character in the series, Zane True Star. In my opinion, Cyber Dragon and Cyber Twin Dragon are cooler ace monsters. Cyber End Dragon, for me, uh, will go into the C tier. I would have loved to have seen Cyber Dragon on this list because he would have probably gone into the A tier. It could still be just based on um, what I've been doing of late. Best in Masao is Ace Monster. Now we'll go with Water Dragon next um, grade on this list. Water Dragon requires um, two Hydrogedons and one Oxygedon using bonding H2O. In terms of an Ace Monster, in terms of its design, it's pretty cool and pretty epic. But Bastion had a lot of different strategies in that in the anime. And it didn't really do too well as his Ace Monster. For me, definitely another C tier um, monster on this tier list. Next up is Moki Moki King. Moki Moki King is not really a fearsome monster at all. Like, I love the design and whatnot and the episode that he featured in, but come on. Like, that ace monster is not going to really threaten anyone. <laughs> Arcana Force of the World is the next monster that we're going to put on this tier list. Uh, Sartorius Kumar is um, ace monster, and he featured in my favourite arc of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, which is the uh, Society of Light um, arc in particular. Arcana Force of the World is probably his third best monster i believe the light and dark ruler arcana force monsters are slightly more epic in terms of um ace monsters but where to grade the card is really hard um i'm actually going to put it in the c tier like the two other um light and dark ruler if it's on the, this will be most likely a bit higher don's along is the next card on our list guys of course he um is the ace monster and the duelist that duels uh jaden i believe the dark scorpion concept's really really cool really good fun and all he only features in one episode though if he featured in a few more episodes along the way he may have um got a bit higher on this tier list for, for me rememberable card and everything and very cool to play in real life but yeah a c tier ace monster skull archfiend a lightning a titan card Skull Archfiend of Lightning is just really an upgraded Summon Skull, really. Summon Skull was a pretty epic uh, sort of monster in Yu-Gi-Oh! In Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, Titan features in a couple of episodes. Probably um, C tier rank for me again. Next up on this list is Yubel. Of course, uh, Yubel is a monster and a duelist. Uh, pretty much... Has three epic forms of it. Not a, I reckon a really, really cool um, series of monsters that Yubel um, was uh, in the anime and whatnot in terms of a boss monster. And that it rates pretty highly for me. I will actually give Yubel A tier status. Volcanic Doomfire. One of the rememberable um, arch types of all time, Volcanics. And of course, Axel Brody's Ace Monster. Volcanic Doomfire, very epic design and whatnot. Uh, reasonably comfortable in terms of getting it out with Blaze Accelerator and Tri Blaze Accelerator. In terms of where it ranks in the um, Ace Monster tier list, I'm going to give it the B tier status. Love my Volcanics and whatnot. And he was actually very close to going into the A tier, but yeah, solid, solid B tier uh, monster, Volcanic Doomfire for me. This card, I believe, is Venom Monger, the Deity of Poisonous Snakes, run by Professor Thanalius Viper in uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX again. Epic uh, card design and everything, too. Like, the Venom um, cards, of course, relied on like Venom Swamp and weakening um, the opponent's monsters um, by a certain amount of points at the end of each turn, when they got counters put on them. Turns of an ace monster in that... Uh, it, it was overcome eventually. Uh, for me, for me, it's a C tier status for me. It, it's not as rememberable as some of the other monsters on this list. Super Viracroid Stealth Union. This required a lot of different Cyrus True Style Roid monsters to be able to make this card. Pretty epic uh, boss monster. And uh, for me, I think the Roid monster 
with this one in particular. Yeah, I think I think it could sneak into B tier status, and it will for me. So congratulations for that card. Next up is Zodius, the ultimate Forbidden Lord. Um, it's an Ager and Gecko's deck, and another um, Ace Monster. Um, Zodia and Zodia Net Cross are probably, in my book, a lot cooler Ace Monster than uh, this one. For me, uh, unfortunately, it will go into the D tier rank. Like, uh, at the end of the day, Adrian Gecko is known for his Cloudier monsters, and it's already the ultimate Forbidden Lord. It sort of doesn't fit into his deck. Night Shrouded, or Atticus Rhodes, as Red Eyes Darkness Dragon is up next. Not as iconic as the Red Eyes Black Dragon, so it's not going to be S or A tier rank. Probably not B tier rank either. Probably C tier for me. Still a really uh, nice uh, ace monster. And um, something that I do remember um, in speedruns, because I'm, I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh speedrunner, and uh, that is quite annoying to go up against. Helios Trismegistus. I probably got that completely wrong. But anyway, it's a Helios boss monster that uh, Emmanuel War, uh, Professor Banner, um, has. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't really stand out to me as a really intimidating um, ace monster at all. Yeah, definitely a D tier rank. Sorry, Banner. Armed Dragon Level 10, uh, ace monster from Chaz Princeton. It's a really tough decision, this one. A will B tier rank for me. Uh, probably will go into the B tier rank. Uh, Armed Dragon is a very cool um, ace monster from uh, Chaz Princeton. Camula and her Vampire Genesis. Camula is part of the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX series. Vampire Genesis um, is a pretty easy card to get out, actually. If you can get Vampire Lord onto the field, you can send Vampire Lord away and get this card out. Yeah, Vampire Genesis 3000 attack, uh, a decent beat stick for a monster, and um, Camarilla did get a few wins in the series as well, and Vampires are a pretty epic series of cards. Yeah, Camarilla, um, based on those results, not not a rememberable character, like you remember other characters in the uh, GX series, but uh, the monster itself is probably a B tier, just based on performance. Another one of Tyranno's ace monsters, guys. Superconductor Tyranno. It's a pretty epic uh, card. I think both um, Ultimate Tyranno and Superconductor Tyranno are really decent um, sort of ace monsters that Tyranno plays. Ultimate Tyranno, I believe, is sort of slightly better for me than Superconductor Tyranno. So C tier for our uh, Superconductor there. Let's get some 5Ds monsters onto this tier list, shall we? We'll start off, of course, with the uh, Stardust Dragon, Yusei Fudo's and main character's ace monster. Stardust Dragon definitely um, it belongs in the S tier category. Just just an excellent card, in my opinion. Does so much for Yusei throughout the series, and its ability in itself just justifies why it's an S tier card. Jack Atlas and his Red Dragon Archfiend. Another epic 5Ds monster. And this for me also will go onto the S tier list. 3000 attack and pretty much if a whole lot of monsters are in defense mode and this guy attacks into it, destroys all the defensive monsters on the field. Such a um, devastating ace monster. And Jack Atlas is a very dominant character in the series. We have Leo's Paratool Dragon. Now, Paratool Dragon is a very interesting card. I I, I wouldn't rate it as highly as uh, Stardust or Red Dragon Archfiend, but the ability to get equip spells from your deck and into the hand and then equip Paratool Dragon with them and make him really strong. He's really good with double t tool uh, C and D. Paratool Dragon, for me, is, is just a solid, probably, B-tier monster in this list. Coming up next is Ancient Fairy Dragon, a Lunar Ace Monster from Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. Ancient Fairy Dragon is a really awesome card. 2100 attack and 3000 defense. That's a very good ability. It has actually been uh, banned, I believe, in real life due to how good it is. Awesome backstory with uh, Lunar going to the spirit world and whatnot and um, trying to save Ancient Fairy uh, Dragon. 
from uh, Zaman the um, Ape King. Ancient Fairy Dragon for me is a definitely an A tier card. So I'll just scroll up the list just to showcase where it's been placed. Next up on our list is Black Rose Dragon Akiza and Zinsky from Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. Black Rose Dragon is an epic card. If you get this onto the field, you can pretty much destroy everything on the field. And basically everyone starts again in the duel. That is an epic effect in itself. Boss Monster um, deserves to be an ace monster. And for me, for me, Black Rose Dragon is um, A tier status as well. Officer Trudge, or as we know him as Tetsu Trudge, and his ace monster and Goyo Guardian. Goyo Guardian uh, certainly is a reasonable ace monster. It's got a reasonably good effect in that as well. You can pretty much, when you destroy a monster, pretty much put it on your side of the field in defense position. Decent um, 2800 attack, I believe, as well. Goyo Guardian, uh, for me, is a C tier rank uh, ace monster. Next, we'll do these two ace monsters at the same time, guys, because they are going to go in the same tier for me. Moon Dragon Quilla and Sun Dragon Ente. Both Rex Goodwin monsters and ace monsters in the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D series. Rex Goodwin actually had um, three really decent ace monsters, and these are the two that we're going to grade immediately. Very good synergy with each other. Obviously, when Sun Dragon Ente is destroyed, you can bring Moon Dragon Quilla back on the field, and Moon Dragon Quilla has a pretty nice little ability as well. Both, for me, are, are going to go into the B tier. But, yeah, very rememberable monsters uh, for me. Griger's Monster, Flying Fortress, Skyfire. Oh, boy, what a card. It requires um, Summon Resonator, Trap Resonator, and Spell Resonator to get this guy out onto the field. But if you get this guy out of the field, he's just absolutely devastating. In terms of an anime uh, boss monster for such a minor character in Griger, I believe it's a well-deserved um, place that this is going to get. For me, it is a, a A tier monster for me, like lower A tier. Um, probably nah, we'll put him in B tier. Uh, so yeah, Flying Fortress, Skyfire for me, B tier. We have another Yusei Fudo Ace Monster in Junk Warrior. Junk Warrior is used quite a bit in the early parts of the series. Your Junk Warrior is very easy to summon. Of course, you just needed a Junk Synchron and a two-star monster, really, to get uh, this guy onto the field. Not as iconic and as rememberable as Stardust Dragon. I think uh, probably misses the S tier. Probably the A tier it misses as well. But you have definitely, definitely a B tier monster in terms of an Ace for Yusei. Hunter Pace's Ace Monster and Skull Flame, and we'll put a Supersonic Skull Flame uh, there as well. Both of them are relatively easy to summon. Uh, effectively, Skull Flame just needs something like Pyramid Turtle Destroy to get this guy on the field. But Hunter Pace had some pretty cool, uh, pretty, a pretty cool pair of um, Ace Monsters in my book. Hunter Pace in terms of a memorable character, not so much. He only really dealt a couple of times in the series, but yes, yeah, the the Skull Flames. Probably though in this tier here. We have a Crow Hogan and a Black Wing Ace Monster and Black Wing Armored Dragon. Not not my favourite one at all. Okay, so we got Crow Hogan and his Black Wing Dragon. I probably wouldn't have this as Crow's Ace Monster on this list to be honest. I think Black Wing Armored Master is a lot more efficient and would rate um, pretty highly in my book. Yeah, Blackwing Dragon, one of the weaker dragons out of the 5D's uh, characters. Yeah, unfortunately for Crow, if this is the only ace monster, it's kind of disappointing, but he, for me, is a C-tier uh, rank. This is going to be hard to pronounce, but this is Kalen Kessler's ace monster. Earthbound Immortal Kappa Park Apu. Pretty close, I think. That is a remarkable name for a card, but the best Earthbound Immortal out of all of them in the series for 5Ds in terms of the villains. This this Earthbound Immortal for me, since the Earthbound Immortal arc and the signers battling the Dark Signers are pretty good, he, he's in the A tier rank for me. That's the highest rank I'll give an um, Earthbound Immortal. 
Radio, we've got another Earthbound Immortal. This is Divax, Ace Monster in 5Ds. Earthbound Immortal Casillu. Uh, for me, Divac was probably the weakest of the Dark Signers, to tell you the truth. Like, Leo um, done most of the job against Divac before Luna ultimately finished him off. The Earthbound Immortal, epic design and whatnot, pretty cool effect. But... Yeah, just got easily toppled. For me, it is a C tier Earthbound Immortal. So we've got Griger's Earthbound Immortal now, Chaku Chalua. Chaku Chalua features in a few minutes of the duel between Griger and Crow Hogan, where Crow Hogan openly gets on top in a whale of a ride. Of course, I love the design and whatnot. In terms of an Ace Monster of a Griger, pretty epic and whatnot. But again, in terms of effectiveness and how easily it got dispatched, it's another C tier for me. We've got Dark Sign Akali Carmine's uh, Asila Piscu. I believe that's the name of the card. Duels Jack Atlas with it, and of course Jack Atlas eventually gets on top in the duel and wins that duel. But yeah, pretty epic design for um, the card and whatnot. In terms of an ace monster, I think it's um, reasonably good as well. But for me, the Earthbounds didn't really didn't really um, stand out too much because they got easily toppled quite a bit. But this one here, I believe, will be C tier as well. We have Misty Treadwell's Earthbound Ace Monster. Again, it just falls in the same category as the um, previous ones that we have um, mentioned in terms of an Ace Boss Monster, in terms of their effectiveness and whatnot. For me, C tier rank for Misty Treadwell. Okay, we've got the Goodwin Brothers and their two Earthbound Immortals, Ruska and Uru. I think these two are slightly better than the uh, C tier rank ones. They do fit nicely into the B tier. They like they were featured in really epic duels towards the end of the uh, Dark Signers arc, and for me, they deserve a B tier status. Darkness Neo Spear. We're just going back to GX just briefly before I shuffle in some more Five Ds characters and whatnot. We're going to do a couple more GX here. Darkness Neo Spear um, was used towards the end of the GX anime by, uh, of course, Night Shroud. Uh, yeah, a very cool, likeable uh, ace monster. For me, uh, will fit in the uh, C tier list. Like, I'm, I'm just giving you guys a briefly godly tier status, like legendary status, really good status, average but rememberable status, and D, not so rememberable status, just to give people a bit of a um, up on that. Elemental Hero Shining Flare Wingman is a card played by Jaden Yuki and a pretty epic uh, ace monster to bring out. Very good effect too, I believe it gains 300 attack and defense points for every Elemental Hero in the graveyard. For me, it will go into the B tier rank. A lot of monsters fit in that category. Pretty rememberable monsters, but just not in that high, high tier. Cyber Angel Dakini is a, a ace card by uh, Alexis Rhodes. Dakini is a pretty cool card. Like Cyber Angel as an archive as a whole uh, has made a bit of an impact on Duel Links when it first came out and etc. And it uh, had a wee bit of an impact in the anime as well. So yeah, Dakini uh, definitely a B tier uh, card as well. Uh, D.E.S. Frog uh, was in the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX anime, uh, overseen by the uh, Frog Prince. I don't really remember the episode, to be honest, so obviously uh, frogs have really, really got some good combos in real life. They can uh, easily OTK if they get the right setup. But yeah, Des Frog as a uh, boss monster, or an ace monster, yeah, D tier for me. Right now we'll bundle these up as a group, guys. The Mech Lord uh, Monsters from uh, 5Ds run by Jacob Lester and Primo. Yeah, the Mech Lords had some pretty cool effects. Obviously, if there is a bit of destruction on the board in terms of monsters and some method, these were really, really strong boss monsters. 
for me, uh, they all fit in the B tier. Uh, they are rememberable, and they were very effective and dangerous if they got on the field. They're very hard to get off the board um, as well if you were playing against them in like a duel.